You know, we, uh, we have the opportunity to look and to think about the great things that God is doing and everything that He has done in your life. And one of the things that is challenging for us as believers, as Christians, is when we live our lives differently, when we live our lives in such a way that there's a conflict with the world, what does that do for us? What does that do for you as a student to to try to live your life as a Christian in a culture that is non-Christian? How do you at the workplace live your life in such a way to be different individually? Because when we come together as a church, this is easy. When we come together, this is easy to proclaim our faith. This is easy to talk about. This is easy to live out. This is easy to worship. But when you are removed from this comfort... What is it like? You know, we are in a time where there are so many things before us that are challenging us upon our beliefs to make you as an individual to say, what is it that you really believe? And if you believe that, are you going to stand on it? Are you going to stand on what you believe? Because I may believe that it may be 30 degrees outside, but I'm not going to wear my bathing suit. For one, that would scare a lot of people. But two, it would cause a lot of sickness. But I might believe that it would be okay. But am I going to stand on that belief? Folks, there are a lot of things in our world that we are faced with. There are a lot of challenges that are before us. So many people that are out there saying this is in the name of choice. This is in the name of tolerance. This is in the name of equality. This is in the name for the better, for the good. There's so many things that I hear out there. And I'm not going to get political. I'm just going to get truthful for a second for us. Because I think it's important that when we understand what we have to stand on, what you are going to stand on, do you really believe what you stand upon? There's a wave over our country of distortion and denial about what is truthful and what is accommodating, what is comfortable. There's a destruction out there upon behavior. We've we've missed the mark of trying to define what is right and what is wrong, what is destructive behavior and what is alternative behavior, what is truthful and rightful for me as an individual and what is... God's truth and what the standard that I need to live on. And why am I reminding us of this? There are so many things that we are reminded of in today's world about the news, about uh, stories that we hear, about things that are before us. And folks, I think I've come to learn that there are certain things that I have to stand upon like I've never stood on before. Because there are people out there shouting at the top of their voice that this is what it's supposed to be. And where am I? There are so many people in the workplace out there that say it's okay because it'll just make things better. But is it really okay? There are friends that are saying everybody's doing it. Don't be so high and mighty. But is that really what we need to stand on? I mean, I could give you statistics about things that are going on in our country that you know about. The number of innocent lives that are taken through abortion, through crime, through murder, through mass killings. There are behaviors that are so destructive, cutting and eating disorders and things that are before us. There's so much destruction in the way that we do things, distortion of truth and and logic and ethics that we say as a country and as a culture that it might be okay, but what are we going to stand upon? My prayer is that um, as we begin this look in the next couple of months, we begin to seriously look at the values that we as a church say that we're going to stand upon as we begin this journey together 
The question that I'm going to continue to ask myself and ask you is individually, what difference does that make? Individually, how is that going to change your life? Because we're not in the business just to come and to feel comfortable. We're in the business to be different, which means there's something about us. There is something within us that is different than this in the world. And that something that is within us, God's Spirit, because of what Jesus did on the cross, that changes us, we should be changed. And we should live changed. And we should have a desire to change. But do you? Do I? Individually, what difference does it make? My prayer is that each and every one of us me included, that as we're on this journey of faith that we go through, as we are faced with the things in our world that we're able to stand upon, the principles that we know is truth. Truth. Not anything else. Not what people say, but truth. Let me, I just want to remind you a few things of what we have chosen to stand upon and how that makes a difference in you individually. I just want to remind you of what our vision is joining God in loving and serving our community and world. The fact that this is something that we are going to have as the umbrella of everything that we do. This is our vision. So what does that mean? That's something that we aim towards. Our mission is that every person acknowledge Jesus and be a true follower. Not a fan. A true follower of Jesus. That we individually take the stand to be a follower so that we can join God in what He's doing in loving people and serving people in His name. Here's a couple of reasons that we're going to be doing that. Matthew 16, 16, Jesus speaking. Or Simon P- Jesus asked Simon Peter, who do people say that I am? And he answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter acknowledged who Jesus was. Luke 9, 23. Then Jesus said to them, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. To be a follower of Jesus. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Loving God with everything about you. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded. We are commanded to go and to love and to serve other people. Ephesians 4, 12. The Apostle Paul says, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up. Not to prepare us for comfort, not to prepare us for an eternity with heaven, but to prepare us for works of service. So what is our mission? Is that everybody acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and follow the example that he set. Are you following individually in your life? Are you following the example that Jesus set? Are you denying yourself? Are you dying to yourself every single day because we acknowledge who God is? We talk about how great and mighty He is. We talk about that God reigns on His throne. But does He reign on the throne of your individual life? And if so, what changes has that made in your life? A couple of things that I'm going to be reminding us on as we look at individually how this is going to change you and me is there's a plan that we have. There's a plan that we are going to be reminded of. Four things. Connect, grow, serve, and share. I'm going to be asking myself and yourself, how are you connecting? If you're going to be different, if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, if you're going to learn to love God and to love other people, then how are you connecting in order to make that take place in your life? Individually in your life, how are you connecting? Connecting through worship, connecting through small group, connecting through activities, how are you doing that? And are you growing? Are you growing in your understanding? Are you growing in your disciplines? If I was to go out, track season's upon us, if I was to go out and run a mile (laughs) without any training, I wouldn't run a mile because I wouldn't last. I wouldn't make it. I could walk a mile maybe, but I couldn't run it. Run it in a competition. So you have to train. If you run up and down a soccer field for the first time, you might not do that very often. If you run around the bases 20 times, 
you're not going to do that for very long without training and preparing. It's the same thing about understanding God and God's plan for your life. Knowing what God wants you to do every day in your life, students. Knowing what God wants you to do every day in your life, adults, parents, grandparents, we have to grow. And in that growth, we also see the opportunities that God gives us to serve. And with all that, as we continue on this journey, there's going to be opportunities for us to share. As we come together and we share. As we go out and we share. As we go in our home and share, parents. As we go in our workplace and we share about the great things that God is doing. If we proclaim God for who He is on His throne and we sing about that God reigns and we sing about how amazing God is and we sing about how awesome God is, How is it in your individual life when you walk out this door? What difference does it make? There's a plan that every single one of us need to be on. And we're going to be looking at this as we go through this journey together. This plan enables us to be transformed, to be more like Jesus. And the areas that we're going to look at, how that's going to impact us as a church and us individually, is through those values that we're going to look at. And I want to remind you of what those values are. They're listed in your bulletin. Prayer, intentional sharing Christ, loving relationships, families, commitment to serve, biblical truth, God-focused, personal spiritual growth. Now, there's not one more important than the other. We're going to cover all of those in the next coming months. But here's the question. Today, prayer. What difference does that make in my life? How is prayer helping me to grow in my understanding of who God is? Why is prayer important? Let me share with you the statement that is behind that value of prayer. And that statement is, we believe that prayer is essential communication with God. Essential communication with God. Providing direction, unity, strength, and power, both corporately as well as individually. That prayer is essential communication so that I might receive direction, unity, strength, power, To do the things that God has called me to do. Individually. That's for me. That's for you too. Why is that important? You see that's why we're going on this journey together. To look at these things. Because we are at a critical time. In your life. And in my life. You know I I would have to stand before you. And say that there are things that I haven't done right. And I need to learn from that mistake. Because I want to know more. I want to do more. I want to see more. I want to experience more. But not just so that I can see that and experience it and say, Woo, well done, Paul. But so that I can see what God is doing and really worship Him for how amazing that He is. Why is in prayer important? You got a little glimpse in that video about Moms in Prayer International. And how important that is for people to come together and to pray. So as a church, how are we doing that? We're praying for our community. And we've done that over the two and a half years that I've been here, we've been praying for every street. Some of you have asked, are we through with Whitehall yet? No, we're not. Because if you think about it, we're driving by and there are anywhere from seven to 15 houses every week on that street that we pray for. And we've been doing this for almost two years and we're not done yet. So that should tell you how many homes are out there. Because I make sure that it's not you know, 25 houses on this street, we'll split it up. Because the team going out there, I don't want them to spend all week knocking on doors. Although, if God calls you to do that, that'd be great. (laughs) But we do that. So imagine how many people are out there. How many doors that we've actually knocked on. Because when we pray, it's not just that we're praying, saying, okay, God, we prayed for that street. You take care of them. See, I think that's the problem that we have as a church. As students, as adults, as parents, as grandparents, is that we say, God, you take care of it. God, you bless them. But when it comes down to it, when you stand before God and say, God, I've done everything that I possibly can to grow in this faith that you have given me, that I have walked in faith to believe you, to really believe that you are a God exalted above everything else, that you loved me enough to send your son Jesus to die a horrible death on the cross, To shed his blood so that I might have freedom from my sin, from my habits, from my anger, from my whatever out there. So that I could live in this freedom. Do we really, really stand upon that? Because if we did, then it would be so evident 
in how we live our lives. But it's not for some of us. Prayer allows us to worship and praise God. Prayer allows us to confess things to God. Prayer allows us a genuine repentance. repentance. Prayer allows us, because it's essential communication, to be able to see God for who He is. A wonderful verse that we've heard over and over again, 2 Chronicles 7, chapter, chapter 7, verse 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. There's a sense of humbling ourselves before God. There's this idea that prayer is so important to us, but not just in what we do, it's the whole attitude because Isaiah talks about in chapter 40 that it gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. Kind of like running a marathon or running a mile. But those who hope in the Lord will renew your, their strength and they will soar on wings like eagles. And they will run and not grow weary. You see, the idea is the fact that prayer allows us to do things beyond what we're capable of doing. In the coming weeks, we're going to talk about the prayer life of Jesus and look at how he prayed. Because if we want to be a follower of Jesus, then we need to pray like Jesus. If we want to, we know we may not have the power to perform miracles because we aren't divine like Jesus, but we want to be like his character. We want to be able to touch people like Jesus did. We want to be able to influence people like Jesus did. Why? Because I want to be more in the presence of God I want to take on those characteristics. Prayer is communicating with God. Let me, let me explain it this way. We're going to do a little illustration. Rue, Kelly, come, come up. He's giving me that look. <laughs> because you talked about me earlier. Come, come on up here. He didn't know same right there. Okay. I, yeah. All right. This is Kelly. Um, I call you I call him Rudy. That's just his nickname we grew up with. Kelly's my little brother. Okay. Now, you know, just stand, stand back up here. I was just teasing this time. All right. Now, look at me. Okay. Now, if I come up here and I say, Kelly, I need your help. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to come over to my house every week and mow my lawn. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I want you to come over and wash my cars. No, I didn't do that. Kelly, I need your help. I need you to walk with me every day and take care of all the trash that I have to deal with every day. I want you to give up your time and come and take care of my stuff for me. Because then that will make my life better. And, and Kelly, this is what I want you to do. I want you to make sure that I have all the peace. And, and, and while you're at it, why don't you get another job so that you can give me finances so that I can be peaceful financially. This is what I want you to do. Now that's the same right there. We laugh at that. But is that not sometimes what we do to God? But this is this whole idea. Prayer is essential. Communication, it's essential. And this is what we do a lot of times with prayer. We say, God, this is what I want you to do to make my life better. But, but what does the scripture tell us? There's an essence of humility. Because if, if we really, and, and Kelly, and, not saying it's bad, but Kelly in no way represents God himself. Okay? And we couldn't do, there, there's not a one of us here that could do that. But the essence of, of communication, this, this idea of communication. Now, look at this example. Kelly, I just need your help. Whatever it is you can do, I'm going to trust you. What's the difference? The difference is he looks a whole lot taller down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, help me up here, brother. Hey, thank you. You can go sit down. <laughs> he said he's not going to sit on the front no more. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the difference there? The difference is sometimes we talk to God that way. We say, God, you're, you're bigger than me, 
And I understand that, and I recognize that. And I want you to do some things for me. But Scripture tells us that if prayer is communication with a God that we acknowledge as great and mighty and awesome and worthy of our praise, then we come before Him and just say, God, I trust You because You're God, sovereign on Your throne. God, I I come before You and I need Your help. Not, God, this is what you need to do to help me. Because a lot of times, I tell you, I don't know what to pray for. I don't know what to ask God for. There are many times where I'm going to say, God, come and fix this problem in my life. God, come and fix this person in my life. God, come and fix my kids in my life. And you know what happens a lot of times? God doesn't say anything. Because I'm not listening. You, You hear me, church? Individually, for you, what does prayer do for you? How has prayer changed you individually? There are a couple of things because God calls us to pray that we need to to see. And these are all coming from Scripture. I'm not telling you anything. God communicates to us. We communicate to God. Romans 12, 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Be faithful in in prayer. Ephesians 6.18 says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with the kinds of prayers and requests. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit, meaning that we're so aware of what God is doing, that we don't just come and say, God, take care of my list, but we come and say, God, this is what I'm sensing. This is what I hear you saying. This is what I know you're calling me to do. If you say that I need to... um, protect and keep my body holy, then there's nothing I'm going to take in and there's nothing that I'm going to let out. There's nothing I'm going to see. There's nothing I'm going to say that will dishonor you as a holy God. If that's really what we're saying, then we communicate that faithfully in the Spirit because we realize that's what God is telling us. Praying in the Spirit. Understanding the mindset that we are with God. Becoming more like Jesus. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about everything, but it about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God. Present your request to God. Coming before God. Colossians 4.2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer, <clears throat> being watchful and thankful. Devoting yourselves to prayer. Saying this is going to take priority in my life. That's one of the th- reasons why I was so glad when, after we first came, we did the I Focus strategy and we asked you as a church questions. And we, this is where we developed these eight core values that we stand upon. And, and I'm glad that we have this value because it's so important. All eight of these are important to us. But individually, how is that helping you to walk and understand God more? How is that helping you to become more of a follower of Jesus? How is that helping you to love people and to serve people through prayer? Sometimes we pray, and I know students are, are guilty of this sometimes, just as like adults, But we pray all the time because we face people in our everyday life. God, will you just take care of that problem in my life? And this is his name or her name. God, just take care of that. God, wipe them. God, just bring your curse down upon them like you did in the Old Testament. I know, we do that. We're human. You know, we may not say it like that. Say, God, you handle it. We do that, though. Pray continually. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. 1 Timothy 2, 1 says, I urge you then, first of all, that request, prayers, intercession, thanksgiving be made for everyone. All of these things, prayers. You see, the problem is we get so wrapped up in our lives that we forget that prayer is an important part. Prayer is communication with God. I remember the story it's not a story, it's an experience I had. Um, when I was in Louisiana, South Louisiana, we were in Walker, Louisiana, which is outside of Baton Rouge um, on I-10. It was Baton Rouge, uh, Denham Springs, where there's a great Bass Pro Shop at, and then Walker. Um, <coughs> and um, we were down there uh, for almost four years, four and a half years before coming back up to Arkansas. So I call that our mission field experience down in South Louisiana, let me tell you. But anyway, while I was down there, I had some great men in the church that, that I got to know um, in the position I was in as administrator and, and uh, education minister. 
uh, just developing a relationship. And these guys decided they were going to take me rabbit hunting one time. And I'd never been rabbit hunting before. Uh, so those of you that have been rabbit and we, ra- we hunted with dogs, beagle dogs. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I was like, sure, okay. And so they were telling me what all I needed and, and uh, my shotgun and, and everything, and shells that would be good and all this kind of stuff. And so uh, we get ready and we go out there. And, you know, there was probably about 10 of us that were there. And they were talking about at their camp that we were, they were going to place us in certain points and they were going to run the dogs through this thicket and shoot the rabbits out and we shoot them. I thought, okay, that sounds pretty easy. I think I can handle that task so we get out there you know this kind of exciting first time I've ever done this and um, this um, Carl one of the friends um, you know kind of walks me out here and says okay you stand in this area but remember about you know so many yards over it's going to be somebody else and we're just all surrounding this field Um, and and we're going to go and of course in the background I can kind of hear the dogs a little bit just he says you know at this time, he gave me a time, we're going to set the dogs loose. So he, you know, goes back because there were some of his dogs. And so everybody was ready, and so we were getting out there. And I'm in the woods, you know, can't see anybody, but I just know not too far off are other hunters. It's always comforting to know that other hunters with guns are close. That was a comforting thought. The more I thought about it, I'm like, what am I doing out here in the woods with men and guns? But it was fun. So we're out there. The adrenaline begins to go. And the problem is, I'd never really experienced this feeling that I had, this hunt of rabbit hunting. Because I don't know if you've ever hunted with dogs before. But as you're out there, and I'm just kind of like, okay, okay, yeah, if, if they run through there, I can get them in this lane right here. There's a little shooting lane. That's too thick, so maybe I'm in this. I'm just kind of scoping things out, seeing what I might could do. And then the time comes, and the dogs let loose. And it's it's kind of this thing of excitement and fear overcame me. Because as I listened to these dogs, you know, and I could hear Carl and some of the other men that were, you know, uh, going with the dogs, kind of, you know, yipping and hollering and all this kind of stuff, and, and walking through here, and... And, of course, things start going through my mind. What if I shoot somebody? You know, what if I, here I'm a menace, what if I miss and I'm embarrassed? (laughs) You know, what if I don't have enough shells? You know, all these kind of things. And as I'm thinking about all this stuff of how I'm going to react and what I'm going to do and all this, the the dogs are coming closer and closer because I can hear them. And the closer that they get, the more my heart starts to beat. And it's this crazy idea that, okay, this rabbit's going to come by, and I'm going to shoot it. So it's, have you ever been skeet shooting or anything? You know, it's kind of like, you know, you have to, I'm like, I'm practicing out in the middle of the woods. Nobody watching. I'm just kind of like, okay. <laughs> you know. You're like Barney Fife out there or something. <laughs> but, but the thing, the crazy thing is, this whole time the dogs are barking. And they're coming closer and closer. And before long, I'm like, they're coming towards me. <laughs> they're coming. And so I'm out, you know, I, I really feel like Barney Five in me. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I hear the dogs and they're right upon me. And I'm kind of like, okay, are they this or that way? I can't hear. God help me. <laughs> you know, I begin to think, okay, I'm walking in faith. I'm walking in faith. Don't shoot nobody. Don't shoot me. I almost want to yell and say, I'm over here. I'm over here. <laughs> but then they come. The dogs come. And all of a sudden, I can hear something coming through the brush. I'm like, I hear a dog. You know, of course, who, as a hunter, you know that feeling. It's kind of like my heart's beating right now, just remembering it. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, I, I hear this. And so I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. And then all of a sudden, I can, probably from, from me to Christy, I can kind of see over here this rabbit. And so all of a sudden, I just, I know you're not really supposed to do that, but I just kind of shot from the hip, you know. Boo, 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 boo. I had four shells, and I think I used them all. <laughs> but I got the rabbit. But, <laughs> no, no, no. 
So the dogs go, and I'm like, oh, I can't even hear them anymore. And I walk over there, and I'm like, where's the rabbit? There's a part, and there's a part. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, they're going to come. So sure enough, they gave me a hard time about uh, killing the rabbit. Uh, but it was, it was an amazing experience. But I had no idea it was going to be like that. No idea whatsoever that things were going to be that tense, that things were going to be that exciting. And yes, I was out there and I was praying. You know, but, but I went back and I did it again. And I missed, you know, a rabbit or two, but that's okay. But, but it's kind of like this experience and journey that we have with God sometimes. We have no clue what it's going to be like, folks. We don't know how exciting, how fearful, how painful, how our experience might be. But let me tell you this, God knows. And you individually, how are you walking in your life every day to experience that? What are you doing to prepare yourself? Now, this is a funny story about me, and I, I'm so glad there was no cameras on phones, you know, or anything there. I'm so glad nobody was with me to experience that with me because I would be so humiliated. But in that life sometimes that we go through, and sometimes we make decisions in our life that humiliate us and make us feel so low, or we do things that we shouldn't do, and we say, oh, why did I do that? And we're thankful for some that nobody's around to see what we do in our life. But every time that we have an opportunity to, to say, okay, God, you are God. God, I am going to worship you. God, I do want to be more like you. How are we preparing ourselves for that? Because we don't know what the hunt may be. We don't know what life may be like. We don't know what experience we're going to have and sometimes we don't know when that rabbit's going to run by whatever that rabbit might be for you maybe it's a temptation maybe it's sin maybe it's anger maybe it's something that you lust maybe it's something that you're struggling with maybe it's something every day that you see in your life i don't know what it is but to know that we can stand upon a god who loves us and communicate with him are you communicating with God today in a way that He knows you? I mean, God knows you because He's sovereign. But are you letting God know you? That's the question. Are you praying in such a way that you're communicating every day the good and the bad, the ugly and the beautiful, all of those things in your life, so that you can become more like Jesus. And then when you come together, as we come together and we worship and we say, God, you are great and mighty and I'm going to worship you. Then doesn't that bring such a such an exalting feeling upon us to know that we're in the presence of that God if we say that about God? So here's my challenge to us. If we're going to worship God in the way that we worship God individually in your life how does that make you different as, as we walk on this journey together of faith how is that going to change me how is that going to change you in the way you parent in the way that you work in the way that you teach in the way that you walk the hallways how is that going to make you different in the way that you see other people because I'll have to tell you this whole understanding that we're on this journey of faith together and there are things that we've got to do. I'm humbled because I'm not doing everything that I need to be doing. And there are things that God reveals to me that I need to do a better job. I, not as pastor, but Paul, that I need to do better at so that I might become more like Jesus, to be a true follower of who He is, the character of Him. And then to know that no matter what life brings me, because of accepting Jesus as my Savior, I do have hope. A hope that nothing can give me in this world. Can you say that today? Are, are you praying and communicating with God in such a way that you can call Him your Lord and your Savior? Maybe you've never done that before and you need to accept Jesus Christ 
as your personal Savior and say, I've never made a decision to accept Christ, what He did on the cross. I don't understand that. And you need to make that choice. And from this day forward, you can walk in faith knowing that Jesus died on the cross, loves you enough to pay for your sins so that you might live a free life. Free from the consequences of our choices? No, free from the bondage of sin in your life. Because when we disobey God, and when we stand on our truth and not His truth, when we make choices that are against God's commands, but on our commands, that's sin. And we're going to look at that as we walk through this journey together. But today, let me ask you this question. What is prayer doing for you? What is prayer doing for you to change your life? We're going to be looking at that in the next coming weeks about specifically how prayer can change us. If we look at Jesus and how he prayed, if we want to be more like Jesus, if we want to be a follower of Jesus, if, we, if you and I individually want to grow to really love God for who he is and what he has done and serve other people because of that love, if we really want to be more like Jesus, then what are we doing through prayer to change that? I've got some cards that I'm just going to offer to you. I'm not asking you to take them. If you want to, that's fine. But on these cards is just reminders of different areas. There's four quadrants of areas in our life that we can pray for. And you can take one and fill people's names in or things in to remind you this month as we look at prayer how important that is how it can change your life individually. If you've never had a prayer life with God, if you've never sat down and prayed, I mean really prayed and poured your heart out and said, God, here's the things I'm struggling with. You know, sometimes we think we're not good enough to go before God. Sin is sin, folks. Jesus died for all kinds of sin on the cross, not just for a few. And we come dirty as we are, sinners before God, asking to be forgiven. Doesn't, you don't have to clean your life up to come to God. You just have to come to God and acknowledge Him. It's kind of like getting on your knees before a giant. Sorry, Kelly. Before God and saying, God, I'm humbling myself before you because I can't go through this life without you. That's humbleness. Have you really prayed that prayer to God? This is just a simple reminder that I'm just giving you to do. My family, my friends, my nation, my world. Those are the four quadrants. I'm just going to lay some of these out here. And if you want to, during our response time, if you want to come up and just say, I'm going to get one of those. One of that is you are committing to do it when you come and pick one up. It's not going to be for show. If you want to wait till they're going to be here. If you want to wait till everybody leaves and then pick one up, that's fine. But I'm just asking you to respond to what God is telling you. If God is speaking to you, communicating to you, that's worship. How are you going to respond back? Because that also is worship. How are you going to pray? But more importantly, how is prayer going to change you individually to be more like Jesus? Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for the opportunity that we have to come. And uh, just to be able to experience you for who you are. God, I thank you for the worship that we've had. I thank you that we've had the privilege to exalt you. To talk about how you reign and how mighty you are. And God, I just pray that you speak to us right now. That God, individually, you just speak to me. God, that you reveal the things in my life that I need to confess. That you speak to me and tell me the things that I need to do. And God, sometimes I may not understand. I may not know this life that I'm living and all the heartaches, I don't know what's going to happen. God, we don't know what the hunt is going to be like, but God, just speak to us. Give us that courage and boldness. And God, my prayer, I want to intercede for all of us here. God, asking you that you will give us a spirit to be able to communicate with you. Whatever sin we have that's enabling us to fully commit ourselves and fully kneeling before you, God, open our eyes to that so that we may give it up right now. God, if we're scared to pray, God, then you teach us, as your word says, teach us. But most of all, God, as we're on this journey together to become more like Jesus, to love, 
to stand on truth, to be able to touch people the way that you did. God, that's my prayer for all of us, for me. So change me today, God. Change me in my heart. Change me today, God. That I might be a better follower. That you might show me the things that I need to give up. To be a better parent, Father. That you touch me. Soften my heart, God. To give me your words of truth. Discipline me, God. That I might be an example for others. Most of all, God, we worship you. And we call out to you. Help us as we respond. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.